Hi, Data Ben here. Today we're going to cover six mistakes that beginners to VBA make and how to fix them. Let's get started. Mistake number one is having way too many workbooks and worksheets open at the same time. So the more data you have open and the more memory that you're taking up in VBA and Excel, the slower those macros are going to run. So close down all the other workbooks that you're not working on and reduce and simplify the data as much as possible as well. And this will really speed up your macro and VBA code. Number two, selecting and activating code way too often. For example, we want to copy 100,000 rows from the source sheet to the destination sheet. And this is how we would do this inefficiently to begin with. So I'm gonna step through this code. We're gonna select the source sheet, then range A1 to F100,000, selection copy, then select the destination sheet, then select range A1, then paste, then select range A1 again, and then set cut copy mode to false, which is the same as pressing escape after you've done a copy and paste, and then end sub. This is a highly inefficient way to do a copy and paste. Instead, let's delete this code and then delete the data in the destination sheet. Go back into VBA and we're going to type the following line. And this is the line which directly assigns the values in the range A1 to F100,000 on the destination sheet with the values A1 to F100,000 on the source sheet. So it does it directly without selecting any of the sheets or any of the cells. Let's press play on this code. And there you'll see it's copied and pasted the data directly into the destination sheet with absolutely no selection required. Mistake three is not turning off and on Excel application settings. In this code, we've got turn off settings and turn on settings. So when we run this code with F8, uh, it will jump to turn off settings. And here it turns the application dot calculation setting to manual, the screen updating to false, and the enable events to false. So application dot calculation is either manual or automatic. So automatic is the default in Excel, and when you turn it to manual, it turns off calculations. Um, so when you're running your VBA code, it means that there's no other calculations going on at the same time, which will greatly increase the speed of your code. The next one is screen updating. This literally turns off the screen, uh, the updating at all, so it doesn't draw the screen while your code is running, which also saves some time. The third one is enable events. So this means that no other VBA code or no other triggered code can start at the same time as your code's running. Sometimes when you run code, you could actually trigger other bits of VBA code without realizing. So this turns that off. So we just turn off that setting and then we'll continue running the code to turn on settings. And then on turn on settings, it reverses everything and puts it back to normal. So calculations to automatic, screen updating to true, and enable events to true. Please note that if your VBA code crashes and you've already turned off these settings, that you will need to turn these on manually, either by running this subroutine here or running one of these lines in the immediate window. Mistake four is neglecting to use the debug compile code option. So I've introduced a spelling mistake here on turn off settings. So this subroutine doesn't exist. So instead of pressing play to start the code where the error will turn up, instead, if we do debug compile VBA project, you'll actually see that the error turns up here, sub or function not defined uh, on this subroutine and it's not run the code. So it's not actually started the code. However, if I clicked play instead, I'd get the same error message but instead the code has started, which isn't what I wanted to happen. So don't forget to run the debug compile code. Mistake five is not declaring your variables properly. You always want to declare option explicit at the top of your code. This ensures that your variables are declared later on down your code. And if you forget to declare a variable, an error message will appear reminding you to add that in. You also want to declare your variables correctly. So in this example, declaring a, b, and c as integer is actually incorrect. If I run this code, uh, you'll see the variables appear in the locals window. And what we've done here is actually a isn't declared and b is not declared as we haven't put as integer after them. And you'll see in the locals window that they're both declared as the default of variant. And this takes up much more memory in VBA and is very inefficient. So do not declare your variables like the first line here. Uh, because the first two will be declared as variants. Secondly, 
where we have dim d as integer, e as integer, and f as integer. This is okay, all on the same line, and is something that's uh, fine to do. Finally, we have the short codes for integer. So each data type has a short code. In this example, integer is the percentage symbol. This is also okay to declare, and you'll see that they have declared successfully as integers in the local window. But the most common way to declare your variables is simply to declare them once on each line. Uh, this is nice and clear, and uh, you don't miss any when you're, someone else is reading through your code. So, so I would say that either this is best practice, or the middle option here is best practice. You can take your pick. Mistake number six is thinking there's too much to learn. So there's always something additional to learn in VBA, but it's okay if you just keep at it and keep learning new procedures, new functions, new bits of code as you go along, it'll start to slot into place and you'll be able to do some really cool things in Excel. Uh, and VBA and possibly other Microsoft programs such as Word and PowerPoint as well. So mistake number six is not keeping at it when you should keep going and keep learning. Good luck.